Hello folks, this is a bit of a commentary. The United States of America is a unique nation amongst the world's family of nations. We are like no other in the world and throughout all of history. And that is in large part because we have what we call a constitution. And that's what forms our government and keeps it structured the way it is so we don't become basically a banana republic or some kind of a dictatorship or anything else. This is something that is crucial to the United States being what it is, but there's more to it than just our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and how our uh, form of government is set up. It is also our form of economics. It's called capitalism. Capitalism is nothing like socialism or uh, communism or the feudal system of the, uh, the Middle Ages, uh, things of this sort. It, it is a unique uh, economic system and it, it is what, uh, along with other things like our Constitution, uh, put the United States of America in the position it is today, but which I think it's losing its grip on, uh, unfortunately. The other thing that's uh, important to the United States being what it is, is our Judeo-Christian ethic. Make no bones about it, don't apologize for it. The Judeo-Christian ethic is nothing like anything else in the world. It is Christianity uh, that really revolutionized the world. The birth of Christ, the incarnation, the second person of the Trinity, who was always God, who became human at one point. He never was not God that became God, like a lot of people seem to think. No, the second person of the Trinity is co-eternal with the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is crucial to the United States being what it is. It wasn't founded on Catholicism, I regret to say. It was founded on Protestantism. But if you look at uh, Protestantism, it's not quite like what it, what it is today. It has really uh, torn itself apart and degraded into a, almost a chaos of uh, moral relativism and, and such, which is very unfortunate for our Protestant brethren. Uh, I, re I regret to say that, but the Judeo-Christian ethic, which is something that transcends uh, largely our denominational differences, is what the United States was founded on. When we say freedom of religion in our Constitution, I don't think they meant freedom of any religion or freedom of no religion at all. I think they meant freedom amongst the... Uh, uh, the Christian denominations that were existent at that time. And that is important because the Judeo-Christian ethic is still uh, something that is codified uh, most uh, significantly around the Ten Commandments, but also, uh, uh, you know, with the uh, advent of uh, Christianity onto the world stage, it would include things like the Beatitudes and uh, the moral uh, virtues and such that uh, seem to be eroded day and day by day uh, increasingly and that does not bode well for the United States of America. You cannot found a country like this on any other religion or if you take our uh, ethics and degrade it to the point well basically anything goes and we can all pick and choose as we, uh, as we, as we wish amongst all the things that make up Christianity. That is not going to work well for us. Now, I, wa I want to get away from the religion uh, aspect of things and focus a little bit more on the economics and perhaps the pol political for just a minute here. As far as the economics go, capitalism is unlike anything else. Now, capitalism does have what I like to call the dark underbelly of things, where we will promote things uh, to our own detriment. Uh, what we see in America is a bit of a saturation of, uh, of goods and uh, creativity to the point where now we have to go kind of off the rails and into things that we wouldn't do otherwise uh, to gain market share, to keep our businesses alive, and that's not good. We'll also exploit each other uh, and perhaps people in other countries, uh, which is not a good thing. Capitalism is the best there is but there's a better form of capitalism. I don't know what it is. I am sure there are people that are very smart that are working on this. I'd like to hear more about it in the evening news. Uh, it's not all about the, who happens to be president or, or uh, you know, the latest scandal going on or what celebrities are doing and things like this. I would like to hear a bit more about where we can take capitalism to the next level to advance the, uh, the cause of freedom and, and uh, prosperity. 
I do believe that capitalism has uh, pulled more people out of uh, poverty than any other economic system has. But I don't think we are quite there yet. I think we can do better than this. With God's grace, I think we will. As far as politics go, uh, well, I think per perhaps I'll digress a little bit into the uh, the cultural side of things here because politics has a, has a lot to do with that. We watch our country uh, exhibiting all sorts of uh, bad behaviors, uh, whether it's the, th uh, the garbage that comes out of our uh, uh, entertainment industry or uh, whether it's the things that we see happening in our streets. People around the world are watching us and we ought to know this. And if they see us uh, tearing our cities apart, tearing each other apart, degrading our institutions, if no longer our elected officials are taking an oath of office, but even if they do, they violate that and they do what they darn well please. They're going to see the United States on a slide that that isn't going to bode well uh, for the, for that country, for the United States. And what that means is, at some point, the rubber really does hit the road. If foreign countries and foreign, uh, or even national uh, national and uh, uh, businesses within the United States, uh, look at our debt and decide, you know what, the United States might not be such a great uh, risk. We are not going to invest in uh, the United States. We are not going to buy their treasury bonds because we don't consider them uh, a risk that's worth taking. Uh, seeing what's going on in the country and such, then all of a sudden we can't sell our debt. And what happens then? Well, we basically watch inflation take off and, and it will take off and it will not be a good thing. And along with that, the U.S. dollar may not become the international or stay, you know, remain the international currency of exchange. That will not bode well for us. What that means is we will not be able to finance our debt, with the, which is in the trillions of dollars. What you do, folks, matters and people are watching. How you vote, how you act, how you think, what you write, what you entertain yourselves with, what you do on a daily basis is being watched by power players throughout the world and they will decide to put their money elsewhere where they think it's a better risk and they're more likely to gain uh, an interest on their, uh, on their investments. And if the United States is not at the top of that heap, then, you know, all hell could break loose. It's very important. On the manufacturing side of things, I used to tell students that would sign up for shop classes that if the United States cannot manufacture everything from Happy Meal toys to space shuttles and the, the, the greatest missiles and fighter jets and tanks in the world, then we become weaker. And we do. And we are. And to that end, I would like to see people that learn a little bit about manufacturing and machining in particular because that's what I do to decide that they can take the bull by the horns and start doing things on their own. Yes, there is a possibility that you can buy the equipment, whether it's uh, you know traditional machines or woodworking tools, or if it's the latest uh, stuff like 3D printers that generate 3D forms out of out of uh, uh, plastic and you know plastic wire and things like this, or plastic injection molding and uh, you know, things of that nature, uh, get into it. There's a market for you. And it might be a local market. It might be an international market. You might be the next big thing. Who knows? But get into it and, and study it and tinker with it. That's what America has founded on, a Judeo-Christian ethic, uh, a constitutional form of government and uh, jurisprudence and such. And capitalism where you get to tinker and play with things and develop it as it should be and I'd also encourage people to push back against the nuttiness against the chaos against all these idiotic ideas that are being put out there and I would bring it all the way down to the level of your own home in other words a lot of us live under HOAs homeowners associations Oh, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and if you do that, we're going to write you up, and if you do this, we're going to find you that. 
you know, these homeowners associations, I think, are like a first level uh, communism, if you will, or something, because they impose all these rules on us. And from what I gather, 90% of the people that they govern don't want to live by those rules. Oh, it's all for the property values and stuff like that. So when you sell your home, it's worth something. You know what? I think my home would be worth more if I got to do a few things that I want to do. If it wasn't so onerous that I can't uh, leave a trash can out in front of my uh, my house or something like that. Like, what is it? Really? That degrades homeowner value? How about the riots that are happening down the street? Don't they do anything, you know, to uh, uh, negate the uh, the increase in my uh, property values? You know, how about the social things that go wrong? Having kids run around without any parents watching them or, or having... Uh, you know, drug deals on the street corner. Isn't that a bad thing? Doesn't that degrade my property values? I mean, seriously, leave people alone. Let them do constructive things. You know, if my neighbor has a vehicle out front and it's dead and he's repairing it, so what? I don't care. I think that's a great thing that he knows how to fix his cars by himself or, or what have you. If the kids have toys out in the front yard, that is great. That means we've got kids here. And that also means something else. That might mean that my safe, my neighborhood is safe enough that my kids can leave their bikes out and they will not get stolen. I can leave a package on the porch and it will not get stolen. If someone comes through the neighborhood that looks like they don't uh, belong there, one of the neighbors is going to stop them and say, hey, what are you doing here? You looking for someone? Maybe I can help you. But that tells them that people are watching out. I live in a safe neighborhood. Don't screw with this place. Let people do things on their own. I think that would go a, a lot further towards advancing our property values and, and such. And it may give rise to businesses, whether it's a person working real estate out of their house or uh, doing, a, what do they call that, medical documentation and what have you, or whether someone's setting up a new shop in his garage that's going to make a product that he's going to sell that's going to make him uh, capable of purchasing the next most expensive home on the uh, in the neighborhood or something like that. Let people release their economic vitality, their ideas and such. That's a good thing. The United States can come back uh, from where it seems to be headed and become a, a, an economic, cultural, political, military, intellectual superpower like it never was before. And dare I say, a spiritual superpower. Don't forget to thank the good Lord Jesus Christ for all the blessings you've got. There is no other God, no other person, no other anything that can do for you what he has done. So don't forget to say a prayer of thanksgiving. Name him by name. He is our Lord and Savior. Thank you, people. God bless you. Have a great day.